Medical science can indeed be very exciting. There are many, many similar events that have taken place in the world this year. I just would like to know if we can go underground and see our Atlas friends. So it's going to stay for 100 years. And then what happens, Francois? What do you think will happen? The protons will have burned it. <laughs> Yes, uh, and in, during this time, during the, the, the following years, uh, uh, people can see the, the, the CD. There is a, uh, a way to, to, to see black the CD. Yes, sure. Actually, every people entering uh, the Atlas 7 will be able to see black and will see the CDs that Giorgio has handed to us. So it will be buried physically, but still accessible with sight. Okay, that's very good. So people will be coming to the Atlas Cavern, of course, when there is no beam on, and they will be able to see the CD and listen to it. We have two of our guests that we saw earlier down in the Atlas Tunnel, uh, down in the LAC tunnel. The tunnel. They, they've just <laughs> come back to Hi. us. And because we didn't have a, a super 100% connection down in Atlas, we've, uh, they very kindly agreed to come on stage and to tell us again what they were doing there. It was very interesting uh, to know that uh, our uh, CD uh, will be uh, kept, will be buried in the, one of the most important uh, sites of our uh, scientific experiment, the site in which Big Bang, the conditions of Big Bang will be recreated. It's really a, a long uh, trip uh, on, on space, on time, from the beginning of the universe to the future. Okay, this, uh, it says on the back of this CD that it is in fact a time capsule and it is to be opened in the year 2100. Can you just tell us again what you have on this CD? Yes, in, in, which, in, in this CD we have collected more than 3000 messages written by our readers to the people of the year 2100. Their feelings uh, their hopes for the future, also their fears for the future, are, are collected inside. And with some advice uh, to the people of the new, next century um, on subjects like the science, the use of science, the earth, the protection of the earth. What's the dominant note in this? The I dominant suggest... note was the fair use of science, uh, the environment, the peace, and uh, one of the most uh, curious uh, messages was uh, from uh, one reader that uh, has written, if you are going to land to our planets, please protect their environment. Don't do like we are doing to our planet. Yeah, you're, you're great readers, <laughs> Newton. <laughs> okay, we're, we're struggling with the technology today. We're using uh, all the technology we can to bring this program, this webcast to you from all over the world. It's just making me think, actually, are we sure that we're going to be able to read this CD in a hundred years' time? Yes. This is a good question, actually. Yeah. CDs are have very we, out Have of we thought fashion. about this? Yes. We, are, um, we, we keep in mind this problem. So we are choosing a, a TXT uh, format for uh -huh. the message, hoping that the, this format will be readable in future. Okay. Uh, we are, have also a backup of paper of this because... Paper backup, uh, interesting. Paper backup. No one knows, perhaps the paper will, will last Back in longer. fashion. Yes, <laughs> less. Okay, yes. may I take the... Now, we've actually... I'm actually holding a CD in my hand. Now, presumably, this isn't the CD that you have just buried in Atlas. No, not, not quite, actually. There is a funny story about this, uh, this CD. Actually, we had a similar CD given to us uh, back, I think, in 2000. Yes. And um, we had a first ceremony where we buried this CD and, uh, with a plague into the tunnel. So that happened, I remember, on a Tuesday evening. It was like 7 o'clock in the evening. And we hid this behind a very thick plexiglass plate with screws, eight screws, which were uh, tightened very nicely. And next morning we came, the screws were a little bit open, the CDs had disappeared. Next morning. It's very rare that things get stolen in our underground. I think in my recollection is that three times we had something stolen. And that was one of the times. So I, I don't know which ghost was uh, hunting these tunnels in the, in, during the night, but it disappeared. That so time. how have you guaranteed that it's not going to disappear this okay, time? So where, where is the CD now? Um, okay, so we have a couple of these CDs. So one was left on the ground. Now it's behind, we have technicians working there now. 
which are sealing these thick layers of plexiglass with screws that you cannot take off this time because uh -huh. they have no head and it's also sealed with some special glue. Uh -huh. And I think it will be quite hard for these guys coming in uh, 100 years time uh, from their planet to take it out of uh, <laughs> the small alcove where it is now. Okay, when you were, when you were making the broadcast from uh, the LHC, you said that the messages could be read by visitors to the Atlas Cavern in, in the future. How will they do that? Yeah, exactly. Actually, the, uh, the experimental cavern where the Atlas detector itself is installed won't be accessible during the run of the LHC. Okay. Uh, but the, the cavern, which is just nearby, will remain accessible at any time. Okay. Um, when we switch off the beam, we need to access this cavern, the mm -hmm. Atlas cavern, the physics, the detector itself. And for this, we run through a small gangway. We, we go through a SAS, which needs to be open. And as soon as you open the SAS in front of you, you have this small alcove with a thick layer of plexiglass and you see the time capsule just behind it. So basically, anybody accessing the Atlas detector will be able to see this uh, See it, this plate but not read what's on it. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. that's kept for, uh, for the, our visitors in 100 years time. And the text is kept locked away in some library safe somewhere. I, actually, the, I think your question was interesting, whether we could be able to read this in uh, 100 years time. We just have to look in the past, really. Uh, is there, are there many things that have, we found with, that are written that we can't understand today on Earth? I think we managed to read what the pharaohs wrote on the pyramids and what Sumerians wrote. So I think this should be uh, like a... The only, so difference, the only difference that comes to mind is that with those, we use our eyes. I can look at this for a very long time and I'm sure I will not understand it at all. <laughs> That's right. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, you very, very much for coming thank you, and Francois. spending your okay. time down in the Atlas okay, I think that's, that's a big honor for us anyway to host this time capsule for the next century. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. And it's time for us to go back to our Nobel Prizes.